Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, we'll try to see how the plane beam reinforcement and how the shattering is given practically at the site. So this is how the reinforcement looks. This is how the reinforcement looks. This is how the plane beam reinforcement looks. We have a PCC here, and over that we have kept the plane beam reinforcement, and all these are the stirrups what you can see. Similarly, this is a one more uh, plane beam reinforcement what I have. So these are the top reinforcement which is kept here. These are the bottom reinforcement which have been kept here, and all these are the uh, stirrups what have been placed. And according to our drawing, according to our understanding from the previous drawing, uh, this stirrup should be made up of eight mm bar, and the center to center spacing should be eight inches. The center to center spacing should be eight inches. And you can see the cover blocks have been placed here. Once it is once uh, once once the time of uh, concreting comes, this con uh, this cover block will be put inside this rebar so that a clear cover of 25 mm is maintained in the plane beam. And these are the reinforcement of the column which will go to the next floor. As of now, we are in the plane beam. Once the plane beam is casted up to this level, from here to the next to the first floor, uh, this column will go up to the first floor. And all these are the lateral ties what they have provided in the column. Similarly, this is how the shattering of a plinth beam is going to look. This will be the depth of the plinth beam, and this is the breadth of the plinth beam. Based on that, this shattering will be arranged at the site. Similarly, this is another one. It's again the same thing. These are the column which will go to the next floor. We already seen how to understand them. We are just concentrating on the plinth beam as of now. So again, these are the plinth beam reinforcement. You can see the cover blocks placed here, and then it will be closed with the help of this. Uh, shattering plates and uh, wooden board, and then the concreting of this plane beam will happen. So again, it's the same thing. What you can see here, uh, again, same thing. Uh, this column will go to the next floor. All these are how the plane beam reinforcement are kept, and this support. What you can see that will help the concrete because once you pour the concrete, the concrete will apply a lateral pressure on this shattering. So in order to keep it in its position, we give these props, a kind of props and wooden ballast. You can call them. These are the steel props. What they have given. So that uh, even if, once you pour the concrete, that will not put lateral pressure on this shattering board, and whatever size is required, the same size will be achieved once the concreting is done. So that is why we give this as a support. These are called as props. You can call them as a props, wooden props, or you can call them as a steel props. We'll try to see a video of how uh, practically uh, those things are done at the site. So this is how it is. This is how the plane beam reinforcement will be arranged. So he is arranging the stirrups, whatever uh, whatever is mentioned in the drawing. According to that, this uh, stirrups will be arranged. According to our drawing, it should have been eight mm, and center to center spacing should be eight inches. So with the help of a binding wire, they'll try to bind all these things. This is how they are doing the binding, and this is the plinth beam PCC what we have. This are uh, let us say in this particular drawing. Uh, let us say what they are doing is they are providing three bars at the top and three bars in the bottom. And all this reinforcement will pass through the center of the column. Wherever there is a column, from the center of the column, these bars will pass. You can see them. This is how they all are arranged throughout. Wherever the plain beam layout is given, there we have there they have to arrange this plain beam reinforcement. And those drawings we already seen. So this is how the uh, you know uh, beam reinforcement will be put up. I mean the plain beam reinforcement. It has to pass through the column. That is how it is done. They are passing it through the column. Yeah, so I hope uh, you have got an idea about how the plinth beam reinforcement is to be done. Next, we'll see how the casting of a plinth beam will happen. So once that is done, this is how the plinth beam has been. Con how, this is how the concreting is done for the plinth beam. You can see the concreting here, and uh, we'll try to see a video. Yeah, so this is how the concreting is done for the plinth beam. So all these are the plinth beam. What we have arranged, and this mason, what is doing is trying to put pour in the concrete into the plinth beam. Then he is going to check the level so that whatever, let us say, you have a plinth beam. We had a plinth beam of uh, nine inch by fifteen inch, and we had a plinth beam of nine inch by uh, uh, nine inch by six inch. If I am not wrong, yeah. So whatever six inch is a depth, or whatever fifteen inch is a depth of that plinth beam, this uh, mason will try to check it so that the exact same thing, exact depth you are achieving at the site. So this is how they try to do, and this is a vibrator. So vibrator will help you. Uh, so especially near the uh, beam and the column junction, you'll have more reinforcement. As a result of that, what will happen is the concrete will not go uh, everywhere. 
I mean, uh, it's difficult for the concrete to flow. That is why we will make use of this vibrator. So this vibrator, after using the vibrator, uh, if uh, this will uh, make the concrete flow, and also you're not going to get any honeycombs, and you're going to get a uniform surface. So that is the intention of using the vibrator. So this is how the uh, vibrators are used, so that you're going to get a good mix, and there is no honeycombs happening. Right. So this is how the concreting of the uh, plinth beam will happen. Once the concreting is done, finally your plinth beam is going to look in this way. So this is what we had done. So this is how the plinth beam is going to look. Once the concreting is done, once you remove the de-shattering, I mean once you remove the shattering plates and all, this is how the con uh, plinth beam is going to look. Uh, this is, let us say, this is my, um, I'll make use of pointer here. Let us say this was nine inch, what I had seen in the drawing. This will be width which will be nine inch and this depth, let us say it was 15 inches. So whatever is was draw, what, whatever was there in, whatever was there in the drawing, the same will be executed at the site. This is, a, this is also same thing. Let us say this is also nine inch by 15 inch. So everywhere you can, you can see that dimension happening. Whatever was there in the drawing, the same has been executed practically at the site. So that is how, that, that is how we have to understand the uh, plane beam layout and whatever we saw right now, that is from practical point of view. This is how the execution is to be done. I hope it's understood up to here. We'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.